Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Colleen. If you, this is your first time visiting here, then um, please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell so that you're notified anytime that a new video comes out. I try to get a new video out every week. Sometimes that's not possible, but that's what I aim for. Um, I usually have them set for Tuesday afternoons. Um, I'm a little behind this week, but I, I am here, so I'm glad to be here. So today I'm going to share with you two side dishes that are great for fall and great for a crowd. So um, you can expand these or make them smaller, uh, whatever your needs are to serve your guests. And I think that you will enjoy these. So by all means, please um, stick around and I will gather up the ingredients and be right back after this. I'm going to start off today by doing some balsamic roasted Brussels sprouts and I've washed the Brussels sprouts but now that I've washed them, I want them to be pretty dry so that the glaze will stick to them. And I have about three cups here. Um, but again, as I said before, you can expand this recipe to work for a crowd. So the first thing that we're going to do is go through the Brussels sprouts and just cut the ends off because those ends get brown and tired and check for any leaves that aren't perfect on the outside. And then I'm gonna cut them in half. And I'm gonna just fold them in a bowl while I go through all of them and do the same thing. Brussels sprouts are a wonderful fall vegetable and with the way things are produced these days, we can uh, also get Brussels sprouts pretty much year round in the store. Maybe where you are, you can. Um, we definitely do have times when we don't see them in the stores here, but I know that most big centers have them. So um, they're a delicious vegetable that have a lot, uh, that are finally becoming popular again. For a long time, Brussels sprouts were like horrible. If you tried to feed them to your family, they thought that you were trying to kill them for sure because they went through a phase where they were not the most popular vegetable. But they are high in vitamins and minerals and fiber. They're really good for us. And they, you can do so many different things with them. One of the things that I did in the last couple of years was I made a Brussels sprout pickles. And I have to say we loved them. Now, recently we opened up a jar after a year. Uh, might have been a little longer than that actually. After a year in the cupboard and we found that we weren't appreciating the taste of them so much anymore. They tasted way too strong. And there was nothing wrong with the canning process. I think that it was just a matter of the Brussels sprout being pickled in the jar. So, so I would suggest if you're going to pickle them in a jar, don't do it in big batches, do it in small batches and eat them up because they are delicious. So I have definitely um, tried many different recipes for to use with Brussels sprouts and uh, a salad is really nice, like a Brussels sprout slaw is a really nice way to use up the Brussels sprouts as well. Right now, Brussels sprouts are a really good price in the stores because it's the end of the season and the uh, Brussels sprouts do definitely come off at the end of the season. That's their high time. So there is an abundance of them right now. I have never had any success um, freezing them, but I have bought ones that were frozen that turned out great. So 
here's my pile for the compost. I'm going to just set it aside. I'm going to get, I have the oven set to 350 degrees at the moment. And I have um, some pine nuts here. I need a half a cup. Now, if you don't like pine nuts, you could use any kind of nut that you like. I need a half a cup for this recipe. And I keep the pine nuts because they're very dear. Um, I keep the pine nuts in the deep freeze, which keeps them nice and fresh for when I need them the next time. I just staple the top down and pop them in my freezer. So I'm just going to sprinkle these. Now, this is one of those times when you don't want to turn away from the oven. Doesn't matter what's on TV. Doesn't matter who's making a phone call. Ignore them. Because these can go from being nice and brown to being totally inedible in seconds. So we're going to put them into the oven for approximately five minutes. I'm going to give them a shuffle around part way through, but I am not taking my eyes off them until they're ready. Now while the pine nuts are in the oven, let's get at this simple glaze that we're going to make. So I am going to use uh, three quarters of a cup of balsamic vinegar, provided I can get into the balsamic vinegar. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this recipe. I bashed on the lid. I finally peeled the lid off and I will have to use up the rest of this. So first into there goes the balsamic vinegar. And this is a good vinegar uh, from of Medina, of Medina, yes. And I enjoy this one from the grocery store. I think I'm going to be glad I only needed three quarters of a cup for this recipe because I think that might be it. There's my five minute timer. They're perfect. The pine nuts are perfect. So I just switched the temperature of the oven. It was at 350 degrees to roast the pine nuts. The pine nuts. And now I am uh, needing the oven to be at 400 degrees to be able to cook these. So, did I get three quarters of a cup in there? No. I got two thirds of a cup, which is just going to have to do because that's all I have. I also need a quarter of a cup of honey, and I'm using good Canadian Rocky Mountain wildflower honey but use whatever honey you happen to have on hand. And I need a quarter of a cup. And I love this combination. This is great for all kinds of roasted vegetables. So don't be afraid to use it for other things as well. And we'll get all that honey out of there. Don't know where you guys live. But we have delicious honey here in the Rockies. And we have local growers who uh, tend the bees and um, as a result they produce really fabulous honey. Now I'm just stirring this and I want to make sure that the honey gets all emulsified into the vinegar. And that can take a minute so this is a good practice exercise for patience. I know, I'm making a lot of noise. Okay, I'm going to taste it. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. That wildfire honey is so good. And now, I am going to just bring these guys over here and I'm going to dump this on you can see that it makes lots of glaze, so don't be afraid to add more Brussels sprouts if you're having a bigger crowd. We are having uh, these two sides as our dinner tonight. So, we, uh, it'll be a delicious dinner. I'm going to just bring that pan over here. 
it might still be a little hot. So, is it? Yeah, a little too hot to handle. So I'll try and hold it up here for you so that you can see what these look like. See, they're just nice, lightly toasted. Now you can use walnuts in this or pecans, and I'm sure they'd be fantastic as well. I happen to have these pine nuts and I wanted to get them used up. And I'm using pecans in the other recipe I'm sharing with you today. So onto the sheet pan they go. And I am going to spread them out. And yeah, there's plenty. I definitely could have made less of the glaze. Now I'm going to try and turn all of these guys face down because we want that uh, wonderful glaze to be sucked right into the center of these Brussels sprouts. And when they are, hmm, say, I'm going to say 15 minutes in the oven, I am going to shuffle them about and just make sure that everybody is getting brown because that's our goal. These are pretty small Brussels sprouts, so. And also, these pine nuts are gonna get a lot browner. If you don't like your pine nuts that brown, then definitely wait, hold that back, and then sprinkle them on after you're done with the recipe. I'll be right back. These are going into the oven. Now, just to show you that <laughs> Things behind the scenes don't go always as planned. I completely forgot to add some salt and pepper to this dish. So I pulled it out of the oven and I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then I'm going to give it a stir. I think this just adds another depth of flavor. It's not necessary probably, but I like garlic. Now I'm just gonna give it another stir. And stir it all around. And back into the oven, 400 degrees. This time I don't think I've forgotten anything. Now here they are, fresh out of the oven. They are cooked perfectly. It only took the 15 minutes, so I was glad that I checked part way. And I am just going to scoop some out onto a plate. There's enough here for two or three people. Depends on how much you love them, I guess. Oh, and I got a huge scoop of pine nuts. Probably for this small amount, you don't need that many pine nuts. But here I go. Mm. Mm. It's hard to speak. I'm lost for words. That doesn't happen very often. These are delicious. And if you haven't tried this recipe, please don't be afraid to. It's not the prettiest looking dish, but let me tell you what, it is simply delicious. Okay, let's move on to the next dish. Okay, folks, I'm ready to move on to the second side. Although for us, uh, this is gonna be a main tonight and I'm looking forward to it. This is not my recipe, so I won't be giving you a mouse, um, but I will put a link to this recipe in the description box below so that you can go there and support the channel where I got this recipe from and we've tried it and we enjoy it so i thought i would share it with you and if you go there um, and get the recipe on her channel it'll help her out too so um, please do that okay so we're starting with very small acorn squash and you can definitely get them bigger and these ones are kind of pear shaped almost and so I want them to stand up, so I'm going to cut the bottom off so that it'll stand up like that. If these were larger, you could cut them in half and then you would have two servings. Um, I, as we're going to use this for a main, I am going to 
not do that. I'm going to cut the bottom and the top off. And I'm going to work my way to the inside just by um, moving my knife around. Um, because there are there's a seed cavity in here and we're trying to get to it. Because this is where we'll put the stuffing for these beautiful uh, stuffed acorn squash. Oh, I feel like it's skimming. So there we go. And this is what it looks like when you get it opened up. And you just want to remove all the seeds from in there. You can save these seeds if you're doing a bunch of them and you can roast the seeds in the oven and they're quite delicious. So I would say I have a cavity that's going to hold about a cup and I feel like my stuffing mix is going to make more than a cup so I probably should have picked up uh, another one or two maybe but we're going to do these two anyway. Now because I'm always conscious of seasoning, I'm going to just give these a quick little sprinkle of seasoning and put them on a baking tray. And I have the oven set at 400 degrees and um, we, we need it to be high up there to get this roasting process on the go. So we'll get our way into this one. These are hard to get into by the way, so be super cautious with your knife and roll it if you need to. Just be cautious that you're not cutting yourself. Okay, we're gonna cut around here, get this one cleaned out, and get these in the pan. Now, while these are in the oven cooking, we're going to make the stuffing for them. And you could, by all means, make this um, a vegetarian dish by not adding the meat but I am going to add meat to this today and I'm using some pork sausage an Italian pork sausage and that's why I think it could work well as a main as well because it's got a little bit of everything in it and there's the second one clean, just a sprinkle of salt, and they go to the oven. Then I'll be back for the next part. There, I just set the oven, uh, or sorry, I just set a timer for 30 minutes. So that's how long we have to prepare our stuffing, which won't take that long. This is actually quite a simple recipe. So I will clean this up and be back for part two. Okay, part two. So I have a package of these Johnsonville, I don't know what brand you use, I don't know if I should even say the brand, um, but these are mild Italian pork sausages. And this package, I had to do a little math. This package was 500 grams or about 17 ounces. And I need about three sausages or about 10 ounces of meat for this. I'm removing them from the casing and I'm just going to put these into a, a bag for the fridge and I'm sure my husband will use them up for breakfast tomorrow. I'm going to be getting these into a skillet and get, getting them frying. I'm just going to add a little, maybe a teaspoon of olive oil and I'm just going to, while I'm here and you're here, I'm just going to break these up into small pieces and get them frying. They'll fry up really quick this way. Now once they have started to fry and it looks like they're about halfway cooked, which takes about three to four minutes, I would guess, I will add a little bit of onion. I measured out, um, not, and I'm not sure what the onion amount is. It, it said one small onion. And uh, I've measured out a third of a cup of the onions that I chopped and froze a couple of weeks ago. And so once this is halfway cooked, I'll add 
that to the mix. And yeah, this is going to be a wonderful little dish for dinner. We'll have Brussels sprouts on the side and this, these stuffed acorn squash, and that will make a lovely meal. But it is actually two side dishes. So if you guys, uh, we've just gone through Thanksgiving here in Canada, but I know my American friends have that to look forward to yet. So these would be wonderful side dishes for your Thanksgiving table. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands, get this frying. You know what I'm doing next, adding the onions. When, and and uh, when I add the onions, I'm gonna add four cloves of chopped garlic as well. So that's what I'm up to. I'm just uh, waiting on that sausage to be cooked. So while I do that, I'm mincing up the garlic. And once the mixture in the pan, the sausages, uh, about halfway, I am going to add these onions and these four large cloves of garlic. Not quite sure what I was thinking there. I think three would have been enough because uh, they were pretty large. But that's what's going in the pan next. And then I will be back when we're ready to move on to the next step. Now, I have my meat mixture all fried up with my onions and my garlic. And I'm just transferring it to a bowl so that I can mix in the other ingredients without taking all this extra fat with me. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. In fact, I probably know 10 right off the bat. but. Here I am, risking it all. Now our next step in this process, we're still got about 15 minutes on roasting the butternut or the acorn squash. So our next step is to add the other things into the stuffing. So first thing we're going to add the stuffing is a tablespoon. It sounds like a lot. I'm going to add a tablespoon of Italian seasoning, just a level one. I'm going to add some salt, about a quarter of a teaspoon, and about the same amount of pepper. My most favorite underrated spice right there. And then I need a about approximately a half a cup of pecans. Uh, I'm sure you could use other nuts. When I went to pick these up, it happened that they were on sale, although on sale is still pretty expensive. So pick out a nut you can afford. Pecans are what's on that recipe. And I also need a half a cup of raisins or dried cranberries. Some people would call them, I guess. And these are just so good and so chewy. They're all stuck together right now, so I'm just gonna take a minute to uh, pull them all apart so that they mix in well. And then we're going to I'm going to add just a touch of olive oil to this mixture just to bring it all together, I think. Let me check. Oh no, I don't think it needs that. I think it's going to be just fine. So I'm going to mix this thoroughly. And then I'm going to set it aside and we'll wait for the buzzer to go to let us know that the acorn squash have been in the oven for 30 minutes. Then we're going to stuff them and they're going to go back in the oven again. So I will be right back when they're coming out of the oven. Here they are out of the oven getting ready to stuff them. 
They've been in the 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. And again, I set a timer for that because it's easy to get distracted. These are gonna cook longer now. So we're definitely, I'm definitely feeling that I should have picked up another, at least one of these beautiful little acorn squash. I'm gonna pack it in there. There we go. Whoops. I'm losing them. And this. I know I said earlier that uh, you could get bigger ones and cut them in half so you would have four servings rather than doing them this way. But I think having them this small would work for like a dinner party or a get together because even at that you could easily um, just cut them in half and serve them that way it's still as a side or they would be a really small um, meal for sure so i am going to get out my little tin pan and put it here on the baking tray to put the rest of this stuffing into so that it gets cooked through as well and then i'm going to put it back into the 450 degree oven for another 25 to 30 minutes or until I pierce this with a fork or the point of a knife and it's soft. You don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to underdo it as well. So, well folks, here it is. It's cooked through. They are tender. I'm going to scoop one of them out onto the plate so that you can get a better look. And I can move this aside. And it smells so wonderful in here. I know that this is uh, going to fill us up. And I added my little uh, springform pan to cook all the rest of the dressing in there, or the stuffing, I guess. And let's see if I can get this off the paper and on to the plate. And. There you go, folks. This is uh, the second side and what's for dinner tonight at our house. I had this in the oven the first, first go for 30 minutes, just the acorn squash by itself. And then I stuffed it and put it back in for a further 30 minutes. I think I could have done 25 um, and it would have been fine, but I don't know if you can see, but it is nice and soft. And so I hope that um, this recipe works out for you and your family, wherever you are, and that you can add it to your score of recipes that, that you have that you whip out for special occasions. Until next time, folks, I hope that you are all well and safe. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and like it share it with your friends on your social media. That would be fantastic. And I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.